This week, Sony decided to discount a bunch of the SNK minis that were released on the PSP back between 2011 and 2012. These titles are all ports of old SNK arcade games, many of which didn't make it to home consoles. Right now, these games are a mere $1.49, which makes this the perfect time to load up your PS Vita, PSP, PlayStation 3, or PlayStation TV with these arcade classics. Today, we're going to take a look at the best and worst SNK minis. Let's start with the recommendations. Prehistoric Isle is a game that combines the best elements of World War I with Jurassic Park. Even though the game pilfers from a number of popular shooters of the era, Prehistoric Isle manages to hold its own thanks to a solid theme and memorable level designs. I found the tongue-in-cheek approach refreshing, especially when compared to SNK's other shooters. Prehistoric Isle in 1930 is definitely recommended. Vanguard doesn't get the amount of respect it deserves. This 30-year-old shoot-'em-up does a lot of enormously influential things for the very first time, yet it's rarely mentioned by the fans of the genre. Not only is it a competent horizontal shooter, but it's also a great vertical shooter. That's right, Vanguard manages to fit both types of shooters into one game, all while introducing the world to the concept of dual-stick shooting. It has a dizzying amount of fresh ideas, many of which are still trendy all these years later. But even if you take out all of these firsts, Vanguard is still a damn fun action game that holds up better than you might think. Forget playing some teeny tiny spaceship. In Bermuda Triangle, you play a gigantic spaceship. The craft easily takes up 15% of the screen, a massive increase compared to the other 2D shooters of the era. Beyond the unorthodox ship upgrades, Bermuda Triangle has a couple of other things going for it. In each stage, you'll find yourself flying both forwards and backwards, allowing you to pick up energy containers and other fun stuff. Your ship is also able to shoot in multiple directions, similar to classic SNK games like Ikari Warriors and Guerrilla War. The end result is an exciting vertical shooter that manages to have its own unique look and feel. And just like Prehistoric Isle in 1930, this is the kind of game SNK should be making more of. Taking a break from futuristic shoot-'em-ups, SNK has opted for something a little more contemporary. Fans of top-down shooters will feel right at home with Chopper 1. You pilot a surprisingly responsive helicopter past dangerous canyons, through claustrophobic caverns, into a dangerous factory, the city streets, and even into a war zone. SNK doesn't let the action slow down, constantly throwing new levels and bosses at you. The easy game mechanics and always changing locations keep an otherwise derivative shooter fresh. Never heard of Sasuke vs. Commander? Don't worry, you're not alone. This ultra-rare shooter somehow missed a stateside release, making the PSP the first American console to house this colorful shooter. It's basically a reskinned version of Centipede, which also came out in 1980. Only SNK wisely swapped out bugs for kick-ass ninjas. You run around the bottom of the screen dodging ninja stars and shooting down ninjas. Even though I fully endorse this hidden gem, please understand that this game is well over three decades old. None of the characters are detailed and the animation isn't as fluid as one might hope. Also, the ninja stars can sometimes get lost in the busy background. Just keep that in mind. If Vanguard and Suzuki vs. Commander are the best arcade ports SNK has to offer, then Athena is definitely the worst. Here is further proof that sometimes a cool character can be part of a truly terrible interactive experience. You run around a common RPG-style environment, punching and kicking and slashing your way to victory. Unfortunately, your standard attack barely registers, and it's often hard to tell when you're attacking. Things get a little easier when you pick up an axe or a hammer, but even then you'll have to contend with cheap shots that can kill you in just one or two hits. The checkpoints are non-existent, and the game is too repetitive for its own good. Originally released in the late 1980s, Gang Wars will be instantly familiar to anybody who's played Final Fight, Streets of Rage, or countless other brawlers. 
when a girl gets kidnapped by an evil gang leader. It's up to a couple of street fighters to take on an army of, you know, well-armed baddies. You've heard this all before. The gang wars is a lame beat-em-up that is short and forgettable. The action is little more than punching and kicking, with the player occasionally picking up guns and bottles. On the other hand, the hero does look a lot like Jackie Chan. As much as I love owning these old arcade games on new hardware, I can't help but feel like I'm losing something without the original arcade cabinet. Gold Medalist is a minigame compilation consisting of nine Olympic events. Without being too cynical, this is SNK's answer to the runaway success of Track and Field by Konami. The problem is that it's never clear exactly what you're supposed to be doing. The game doesn't actually tell you what the controls are. So the first few events involve a lot of anger and frustration. Even when you go to change the button layout, the game doesn't give you any hints on what to do. Worst of all, it's set up for four players, yet you're limited to only one. Gold Medalist is a mean, mean game. Street Smart is the unholy combination of Street Fighter 2 and Final Fight. You travel around the United States finding unique characters, each with their own fighting styles. Unfortunately, the limited moveset and poor controls bring this fighter to its knees. The game doesn't even pretend to give players a fair fight. You can forget about winning two rounds, or hell, even knowing how much damage you're inflicting on the enemy. You can thank Street Fighter 2 for stopping the Street Smart franchise dead in its tracks. The original Vanguard is a genuine masterpiece. I was blown away by the innovative mechanics and just how ahead of its time it was. Sadly, Vanguard 2 is not the awesome follow-up genre fans deserved. Instead of building on what made the first game so memorable, SNK decided to build an entirely different game from the ground up. Beyond the boring stages, I found myself constantly fighting the game's tricky control scheme. Vanguard 2 is one of the most disappointing arcade sequels of all time. Did you know that you can find reviews for every SNK Mini over at defunctgames.com? You should head over there right now and see what I thought of Ikari Warriors, Next Space, Bermuda Triangle, and a bunch of other classic arcade games. But first, make sure and subscribe to this video, give us a like, and let me know if you ended up buying any of these old classic SNK games.